All right, let's bring in Senior Special Assistant to the President on Diaspora Affairs, Abika Dabiri Erewa, joining us to uh, give us updates on the release of Zainab Aliyu from detention in Saudi Arabia. Good to have you, uh, Mr. Abika Dabiri. Uh, now, uh, it looks like the government's hard work has paid off with the release of um, uh, Zainab Aliyu, but uh, the real question is, what about all those others who may be innocent, who are likely to be in um, Zainab's shoes. What is the government doing about that? Well, one, let me say I'm very excited that uh, with President Buhari's intervention, like I said um, two days ago, Mr. President got to know about this. We brought it to his attention barely two, three weeks ago, and he immediately told the Attorney General of the Federation to ensure that justice is done. There are two of them in this situation, Zainab and uh, one Ibrahim. And both of them will come back home, as we are sure, a few days back. So I'm very excited that this is happening. However, let's get um, uh, the facts of the matter clear. In the case of Zeno, and like the mother said, this happened since December. You know, but it wasn't drawn to attention, to president's attention until, you know, I've explained to you. However, those that are uh, to be executed, according to the reports that we have seen, uh, legally, they actually found drugs on their bodies. So some, they were in the anal, some in the private part, some in their stomach. So it's difficult to say we didn't commit the crime. But however, if there are cases, we have legal teams being put together by the National High Commission that will look into all cases. But in the case of Zainab, what they did was just knocked her on her door in her room. That there's a bag in your name, which she claimed you know, she didn't know about. And the good thing is the people have been arrested. But I think the question should be this. Mm. Those people arrested, where are they? As I speak to you, they've been granted bail. So they're walking about freely. And why, NDLA, why is that? Well, NDL has to ensure that those people face justice. So they've been granted bail, seven of them. Two, the airport uh, security surveillance needs to be improved. And then in particular, two airlines, Egypt's Air, Ethiopian Air, are the only ones that have been involved in all these matters. No other airline is never Saudi Air, is never Emirates, is never Medview, is never Cabo or Max Air, you know, that go from time to time to, to Saudi. It's always Egypt Air and Ethiopian Airlines. It must be compulsory for them to ensure baggage identification. That is very important. In the case of Zainab, she actually, they saw that her bags were not full. So they asked her questions, oh, your bag is not full. And she went to get her yellow card. By the time she came back, they are checking her bag and it was time for boarding. So this has to be done. And then, like I said, surveillance at our airports has to be strengthened. And then NDLA must ensure that these corporates are brought to book. Beyond, those are the key questions there. Yes, beyond uh, what you, you say needs to be done, is there any mechanism in place by the federal government to actually enlighten those people on how to protect themselves so they don't fall victim to uh, these drug cartels? Yeah, the National Hatch Commission is, has been doing that. But like we've been discussing with them, that has to be strengthened to know that first and foremost, you, you actually, you know, need to be aware of certain things. Don't take anybody's bag and show you identify your bag. So the National Hatch Commission will be doing a lot of awareness in this regard. And we also express support from the media, you know, to, to put all this together. So yes, a lot will be to play National Hatch Commission, I mean, Hatch Commission, NDLA, will embark on awareness programs to ensure that uh, we sensitize our citizens on all these issues so they don't become victims mm. in cases like this. Uh, let me seize the opportunity to ask you a more general question. A, a number of Nigerians have been killed unnecessarily, whether in South Africa, in xenophobic attacks, or in Libya, and uh, of course in Saudi Arabia. What exactly is government doing in concrete terms in engaging these countries to ensure that Nigerians don't continue to lose their lives? In well, South Africa alone, over 120 or so have lost their lives. But since the emergence of President Buhari, the issues that have happened, as I speak with you, about four South African policemen are in court for their involvement in killings of Nigerians. Then the case of Libya, remember that President Buhari gave an instruction, again, when we told him, you know, what was going on in Libya, I gave an instruction, massive evacuation of Nigerians stranded in Libya. As I speak with you, the federal government working with IOM, NEMA, have been able to bring back over 13,000 Nigerians stranded in Libya. In the case of South Africa, you need to break the issues down. We have xenophobia, which African Union, as I said, has to intervene 
it is an African Union matter that has been done. We have the issue of crime in South Africa, so they have to ensure that you know uh, crime is dealt with. And we have the issue, recent issue, the last few cases of killings in South Africa have been Nigerians killing Nigerians. So the mission in South Africa is also appealing to South Africa to help them get those culprits. So we've had issues of cold drug wars affecting our people in South Africa, killing one another. So that makes it a bit more complicated. However, if you give us specific cases, like in the case of Zainab, where it came to our attention that this was going on, President Buhari directed that we should intervene, and we did. And there have been cases like that, even in South Africa. We've been to the prison, we've been able to get some people out who are there maybe because uh, uh, they couldn't pay their bail, meet bail conditions and all that. So indeed, under President Buhari, we've had massive intervention. It may not come to, to the public purview, like in the case of Zeno, but we do intervene. So we have to be specific. However, when you commit a crime, you need to face the laws of the penalty of the crime you committed. However, we, are, we always ensure, as President has directed, that no Nigerian should pay for a crime that he or she did not commit, and we continue to to be very assiduous in that uh, in that right. in that regard. I have to say thank you very much, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Diaspora Affairs, uh, Mr. Bike Dabire Rewa, joining us on the news at this time.